Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Welcome to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour on Super Tuesday. How you guys doing? Uh, in the Cat guest- Tuesday for me. <laughs> yeah, it is. Happy it is Cat Tuesday. As a okay. matter of fact, I got some friends down there. Today in the studio, we have uh, me, Kurt. We have uh, Perry Heitchew, uh, Beach William Beach Baker here. And then we have Andrea and Cole in the studio with us from WeNewsNow.com. So, yeah, how are you guys doing today? Doing good. Very, very well. Thank good. you for giving us your time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see so you all again. Good to be here. <laughs> yep, so, uh, what's in the news this week? Oh, let's see. Last week we had Champs All Week. Mm-hmm. Uh, what a yeah. lot of fun. And What an incredible week, huh? Yeah, an incredible week. Uh, just, you know, I, I don't know. I, I enjoyed Champs so much more than AGE. It just, you know, it has everything, mm-hmm. whereas AGE has beautiful glass. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of the best fine handcrafted glass there is, but... That seems to be all it is, you know. <laughs> so so yeah. this year, it's an art show. Yeah, yeah, pretty much a lot of lot of glass art, you know. Definitely for artists. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, uh, this champs was huge, huge. It was, it was good vibes this year for sure. Yeah. A lot of new vendors I noticed. Um, it seems like the show is continuing to grow. When I went to last, I think what. Not in the winter, but their spring show. The it's July show. The Jul- oh, summer show. Yeah. It yeah. just seemed so. like the people weren't into it you know the vendor there wasn't a lot of vendors there the shows you know the foot traffic seemed light like mm. it was just rocking atmosphere this year i even there was a, let's say there was a nice smell on the uh on the show floor <laughs> this year no. and i wasn't used to that from years past you know i didn't see a lot of security around like i did in years past i didn't see a lot of show management harassing people they seem very hands-off i didn't you see know. one dog this time yeah. Neither did I. That's well. that's just kind of been the thing. With, you know, every other time I've been through champs, there's always been times they walk through with the dogs, and yeah. I'm just like, "Are you kidding me? I mean, come on!" Right. <laughs> <laughs> I started shaking people down for their vape pipes and things. You, know. <laughs> you got one. I know. I you saw, got. I saw one guy getting getting a stern finger pointing for smoking his <laughs> for smoking yeah. his vape pen like blatantly, and I'm just like, "Wow, that was it!" Like. A couple of years ago, they'd have tossed your ass out of there <laughs> really? and like all you know, shut your booth yeah. down. But still, yeah. one thing: there were a couple of booths that got uh, destroyed by aimless workers. And the year before last, I noticed a glass booth got destroyed by a guy in a boom lift. So, like, Ooh. if this continues to become a problem, I would assume that you know the company. I, I think the company has to eat that, like uh, Freeman or GES, whoever produces that show, because it's not the convention center and it's not the the client. Mm-hmm. You know, someone has to eat that. So this mm-hmm. is becoming a recurring theme, it seems, at well, the Champ Show. Yeah, this year I think it happened to Medicali Glass, is what I. Heard oh my I God! I wasn't there when when the when the crash came down, but that's that when that happens there, or even just one piece gets broken, like the whole mm-hmm. place goes silent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like you can hear it echo throughout yeah. the whole thing. And I, that, that yeah. other year you're talking about, they took out their whole booth. I Everything, was standing there when it happened. Every, every piece of glass they had for display, and it was the night before the show was the premiere. And I mean, you can't recover from that. I mean, yeah, they can reimburse you for the glass, big deal, but the whole idea of being at this show is to get people to see your product and to purchase it to put it into their shops. Mm-hmm. You know, you just basically sent how many employees out there to do nothing to you be know? sad for a week <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i don't think they were sad <laughs> uh, it actually happened to hbg glass this year mm-hmm. and it was uh, yeah it was someone on the wheelchair so but everything was covered and everything oh so. it was just a guy in a wheelchair it wasn't a worker no oh thank god yeah okay, so yeah. it was like an accident and everything and he said yeah. everything was covered so they're all very good cool. to go very cool yeah, yeah so imagine that poor guy man i can just, i, I kind of know how he feels there just a lot of people thought it was feeling. our film crew and i was like no it wasn't our film crew <laughs> okay did anybody have a favorite booth like a new booth that you noticed or anything that really stood out any new products anything like that yeah i have a new product i'll bring it in next week it was the uh the the bowl with the built-in ash catchers Ooh. So okay it was, uh, it was quite a new this. product and then they had um I'm, I'm drawing a blank on their name i'll bring their product in next week they they had a quartz nail e-nail 
uh, made out of crystal that had it yeah it had its own reclaimer built into it and the it changed color when it reached the correct temperature so as you're heating with the <laughs> torch it would change color you knew it was time to take off the torch and do do your dab oh, so to so me good. that's that's something that a lot of people don't know they way overheat their their you know their nails or mm -hmm. or underheat them and they're not getting the correct thing whereas mm -hmm. this one mm -hmm. let let you know as soon as you're at the correct temperature so nice, nice. Well, i saw uh the pipe mug booth from the zang products where you can drink your coffee and smoke Oh, the mug yeah. at the same time mm -hmm. so you can like sip it and rip it is their motto <laughs> yeah <laughs> they Kelly had those too yeah. as well. they were selling for like 20 or 25 bucks so i had to snag one of those for myself <laughs> mm -hmm. uh what they had necklace dab rigs for like if your vape pen just isn't cutting it you can like have your little torch and dab with oh, your necklace that's cute. so that was kind of funny mm -hmm. and they had these what caught my eye is there was this guy making these custom made Nintendo systems like Super Nintendo. I saw that you posted. Yeah, that. and they can dab off of your vintage toy rig while you're playing your old video games. It's just <laughs> like the the uh, MacGyver capabilities yeah. of these individual people is just so so unique like the industry has branched off into so many you know i would never have imagined something like that just a couple of years ago when emails were coming out so you know it's it was a fun show for sure and in case any of you were wondering all this stuff that is displayed before us i guess kurt can go into it but these are all supposedly donations received for yeah yeah by champs, you? the the champs people have been, always been a big supporter of of our of our nonprofit and what we do and we go around and we collect donations from from the vendors to help with our patient in need program to help the patients who are disabled and veterans who can't work to help them get their cards for free um we use the products that they donate to us for our raffle prizes and then we retail what we can retail out at first friday and stuff like that so we have a few of the things here unfortunately i was planning on trying to do all of them but we only have five minutes before the show and five minutes after the show, and it would probably <laughs> take 30 minutes. It would cover this whole table, so we're going to be doing them throughout the next month or so here. Um, we got some great products. Uh, did you see over there the Dr. Dabber? Dr. Dabber uh, gave us a couple of vape pens, a hat, a pad. Uh, yeah, they uh, they're just they've always they're good for us every year. They're mm -hmm. they're great. Uh, right. Also, their products uh, Nevada Pure purchased some of their products, so be looking for their products in the Nevada Pure dispensary. Also, very cool. So, um, Dr. Dabber, they gave us the Dr. Dabber Ghost and the Dr. Dabber Light over there. So, um, the hemp, the guys over at Hempstar, Hempstar dot com, uh, really cool cats, great guys. Gave us a couple of uh, the hemp bags over there and a hemp wallet. Um, been supportive of ours as long as I've been part of this organization. I know those guys over there have always taken mm. care of us. Then we got some of the the wands over there from Mystic Timber, MysticTimber.com. That's a those are all handmade wands. Uh, just wonderful people over there. They always they always make sure. And we got some little dab tools there. And then all the jars you see sitting around here, they're all from 420 Science. Uh, they've been a large supporter of ours since day one. Also. Gave us lots of little jars and little little tincture bottles too. Did you see the little tincture bottles over there? The squeezer. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. so you I didn't catch your, those right yeah, away. Okay, the, here we are. The medical tincture yeah, bottles, yeah. so you can make your own tinctures and put them into those. So. Yeah, I think this. Uh, I think these are the people that uh, like Harborside and a couple of those other like big fancy dispensaries use when they have their glass in their jars or something like that. Yeah, for their, for their high end strains. Yeah, 420 Science is is all medical grade stuff, and they've been around a long time. You know, they don't this make cheap cool. products, so right. it's pretty cool. Awesome. So, but yeah, big big ups to all the people at Champs. I mean, right. I I can't even list all the people: Da Vinci Vaporizers, Indica Vaporizers. Oh, geez, it's, uh, Get Down Art. We had the people at Sunshine Daydream give us stuff. Just right. just just all sorts of wonderful stuff. So. Uh, if you're interested in any of these products, come on out and see us at First Friday or our events. We'll have all of the non-smoking utensils for sale at our retail end. Mm -hmm. And then the smoking utensils like the vape pens and the, the water pipes. Pulse is sending us uh, two or three brand new tubes for our upcoming cool. raffles coming up. So, right. And we actually have a couple of those coming up because we have a, a St. Patrick's Day party for patients. Yep, and we usually do raffles at those, and, and it's all only on the patients uh, this time yep. uh, at the Garden House. And uh, you can check our meetup.com group to check that out. And we also have our huge, incredible mansion 420 party coming up. Yep, our 420 party on April 16th. That's the Saturday before 420 because 420 falls on a Wednesday. And 
we really want to rock it. So. Yeah, we don't want to mess up your, uh, <laughs> your skin. There's a lot of hype surrounding this uh, this one this time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everyone's the, ta- I heard everyone was talking to Chaps about it. I am getting requests left and right for people who want to play. Um, our, our entertainment is booked. Uh, so if you're interested in playing at our events, send me the information, and we'll put you on a list of people and maybe for our next, next event coming up. Um, this event here, we have Catfish John is going to be headlining. Yes. Right? So, uh-huh. and any of you out there who like the Grateful Dead, these guys are Las Vegas's premier Grateful Dead cover band. Right. Um, these guys have been doing it for many, many, many years. Uh, I've known almost every musician in this band for over 10, 15 years now, and they they are just tight. They right. they play together th- like I don't. They're you got to come out and see them. Right. So. They alone are worth the 20 bucks. Right. Now we do appreciate all the donations and the in-kind contributions we get from people, and including people that let us uh, have parties in their mansion. But we do apologize a little bit because of the fact that this is not exactly the most handicap friendly uh, uh, place to have a party at our 420 party because the mansion has many tiers. But uh, we hope that it won't be too bad on all the handicapped people and that if you have a major problem, certainly call us first and we'll try to explain how the layout works. Yeah, and uh, a, We're very sorry for that, but we, it's, it's not costing us anything, folks, and we certainly appreciate that. Yeah, it, it, is, it is a donated property, right. and the, the people have the property built for themselves, so it is not uh, wheelchair-friendly. So we but you've got to understand that we are doing this, uh, this party to raise money for people in that situation so it's not that we're not thinking about you it's just this property is not set up for wheelchairs so right so. okay but yeah, see what else we got going on uh thursday night oh well we yeah, we're back at the library yep we got a big workshop coming up uh, thursday night uh six o'clock i believe it is mm-hmm. at the flamingo, flamingo library. library 1401 yeah. east flamingo road mm-hmm. right there just past the uh the restaurants and right by our corporate headquarters. That's right. If you if you want to become involved in in the political aspect of this and you know fight for our rights as patients or you know legalization or whatever you want to be involved in, come on out Thursday night. Uh, we're going to be teaching you first how to get registered, second how to become involved, how mm-hmm. to find out who your representatives are, how to contact them, and how to mm-hmm. how to follow these bills. All very important things if you want to become an advocate. So absolutely, that's Thursday night. So yeah, and there's a lot of other things. Uh, well, we'll mention since we're mentioning that. Uh, for instance, the caucuses are coming up, and it's uh, interesting. That we have a caucus state here, so you're either registered as a Republican, an Independent, or a Democrat, and they have separate caucuses. For the Democrats this year, uh, it is February 20th, and you can actually go to the caucus on that night, February 20th, and you can register right there as a Democrat. The Republicans, the deadline for their caucus registration is this Friday. So if you want to go to the Republican caucus and uh, whatever, then um, and th- their caucus is on February 23rd. But the deadline is this Friday, so get registered if you're going to Republicans by Friday. Now, how get does that caucus. exactly work? Do you have to register just to vote and you can show up, or do you have to go to like a, a caucus training program for the individual <laughs> candidate that you're supporting? You don't have to go to a caucus training program. It's a uh, it's pretty basic uh, state guidelines. It's pretty much the same across the country, mm-hmm. but uh, you do have to register one party or the other. Okay. That's the only thing you have to identify yourself because it's the party's uh, time to choose a candidate, and that's what this is all about. So um, whether it's a caucus or a primary, it's really kind of similar in that capacity, except that this is just an individual, everybody show up. And it's not going to be snowing, so you got no excuses, <laughs> all right? And uh, put the dab well, down and just go out there. And it, it might be up in Reno. <laughs> it might be up in <laughs> Reno. That's true. It's true. Or Elko or whatever. So or from chapter. Why don't we um why don't we talk a little bit about Weed World Weed News Now dot There we go. It's about Weed that World. <laughs> <laughs> weed World weed, weed News. But it yeah. is weednewsnow.com. So Andrea, Cole, I mean you guys have been members of We Can for a while and uh, you started up your your own little thing here, which we encourage, you know, because everybody needs to do their own thing and you know, the more cannabis based things the better in this town. So um, you guys it looks like so what what exactly are you doing here? So, you know, <clears throat> when we first started going to We Can and we met you and Jen, we used to walk around with her iPhone and, you know, film a lot of videos and stuff. And uh, as time went on, now we kind of built Weed News Now and it's a uh, marijuana, cannabis and hemp news. 
and we want to we want to build a community because um, I want everybody to get involved like I was telling you guys before the show we're kind of building it like the Huffington Post mm -hmm. so I want everyone to be involved so I am looking for um, reporters and hosts and all of that and I want everybody to just come and do an interview with me you know what I mean I want to show everyone love um, yeah, so what do, you, what do you have to say about it? Yeah, no, absolutely. There's a lot of love in the industry, and um, our main goal is to make sure that everyone's voice is heard and that we're able to reach out and um, make sure that everyone's able to kind of interact with the community a little bit more. Yeah, so we are also at Champs, and that was great. We literally interviewed till the third day. Um, our camera operators, they were really sore the next day, you know, holding mm. the big cameras oh and God. stuff. So uh, we try to catch a few patients, but you know, it's, it's really crazy once you're in there, you're in the vibe, just mm. looking at different products. We did catch uh, Addie Martin, um, you know, from the mm. Wake and Bake Review show. That was okay. awesome. Good. awesome. I, I bumped here. into them a couple times also. <laughs> I was actually surprised. There were a lot of people there this time who I didn't see there. I just saw their posts and usually I end up over the course of the three days running into just about everybody this time I don't know if it was just so much and it's so big er, you know because every nook and corner was filled usually there's like the areas where there's empty booths where there's nothing there and you can tell there never yeah. was anything mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. but that that didn't seem to be get the case this time every time we went around a corner mm -hmm. there was more <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, Nevada's open for business now. So. <laughs> yeah. No, well, let's, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, okay. I definitely, uh, sorry, I definitely felt the different vibe. I feel like it's a new wave, and uh, a lot of people that were there were, like Kurt was saying, you know, doing their own thing, kind of doing the entrepreneurship mm -hmm. thing, so. I'm, I'm very anxious to see how big the show will get if IP1 passes. Like, wh who will come out of the shadows then? You know, how big can this show really get? Is it going to become more than the top floor of the South Hall? You know, are we going to? Are they going to have to move it away from the World of Concrete? Yeah, different. Yeah, well, they different weekend. Weekend. yeah, yeah. Because the World of Concrete, that's <laughs> no. a huge show. You oh know, my goodness yeah. gracious. I mean, they got the parking lots taken. Yeah. It was terrible to park. Yeah. Oh. I was looking for Jimmy Hoffa. It was so yeah, the <laughs> parking. Uh, well, LV, uh, is it Westgate that's there? Or mm -hmm. They were charging thirty dollars. Sure. This oh yeah, year. that was our old. And they had like the, the gates and everything, yeah. so uh, that was that yeah. was crazy. So you could pull that crap, and it was the Hilton, but they got wise now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a bit of a walk, but it was free. Uh, there was a on the the south hall where we were. There's parking right there to the east of it, and uh, if you get there early enough, there's free parking. But oh, okay. that's usually filled up by like yeah. nine, nine thirty. Yeah, it fills and then, up fast. Then it's the ten dollar lot. The ten dollar lot, yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So just just in parking alone, at this champs between us and our volunteers, we probably ninety to hundred dollars <laughs> just the parking alone. You know sure, right? so, absolutely. So yeah, it's it's crazy, but it it was a very fun event. It really was. So. Mm. I'm um, looking forward to the next one, and that'll probably be in June or July. Uh -huh. They'll put it out. Not as big, because, of course, it's so dang hot out here. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, the vendors don't like to haul their stuff in and out, and, you know, so it kind of brings it down a little smaller. But So, let's see, what else What else we have? In, well, actually, it's about time to take a break, isn't it? It's about 3.18, so why don't we go to commercial, and we'll be back with a little bit more. Right. You're listening to the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Now, here again, the Weekend Radio Team. Welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. So, we were uh, just talking about Champs and all the stuff that's going on. A uh, little special for all you people out there who went to Champs and AGE. If you take your, your passes into Nevada Pure for the rest of the month of February... It's 15% off. So Fantastic. Just anybody who went, just bring in your champs or your AGE passes in Nevada Pure, and they'll give you 15% off. Make sure you mention We Can, too. They are a sponsor of our show. Speaking mm -hmm. of mentioning We Can, um, I believe Euphoria Wellness was kind enough to offer a special to weekend patients on Super Bowl Sunday. I hope some of you were able to go take advantage of that. I went down and got some wax and... Uh, a juju joint and some flowers they had some cheap you know they had they had all kinds of specials and they were able to cut off 20 percent off of those pre-existing specials so i feel like i walked out of there doing pretty damn well yeah good. they so. yeah they offered yeah, a special good. to to weekend members and supporters this last uh sunday 
and it was yeah 20 percent off that's so right. yeah, yeah that, that, was was that was on top of go. the special pricing too so they had i think they had like 29 dollar ace in there also that right. they were going at <laughs> yeah and then you take 20 percent off of that Right. You know? Yeah, you're, they're giving it away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. So we're looking forward to more more specials like that and more great pricing for Definitely. the members out there. Yeah. Speaking so. of uh, the Super Bowl, let's talk about it. I yeah. mean, it was in the news this week. You know, did, <laughs> Kyle, did, right. what, what, what did you guys think? You know, was it the greatest defensive game ever? Was it just boring? Or well, you know, yeah. I'm not a big fan of defensive games. You know, because scoring is what's exciting to watch sure um there were some really good defensive plays it kind of ended the way i thought it was going to be uh cam newton just got flustered right from the get-go and just he it's like he never showed up so i mean it was, you think it was the pressure i don't know if it was the pressure or what but they picked the worst time of the year to play their worst game man no kidding you know they, I mean? had, <laughs> they had 17 games to pull <laughs> right. that crap yeah. <laughs> yeah it's only one game though that's yeah. it it's the half yeah, yeah, but it's the, it's the way, they yeah. get, you can't screw up one game. No kidding. <laughs> you don't get it. It's not baseball. No. It's not hockey. You know, kind can't of come back. Uh, off of the Super Bowl, I got a story here. One of the actual stories we might yeah. end up getting to because we're kind of screwing around so much. Like but <laughs> but uh, it's, the title of the story is NFL reporters are shocked by San Francisco's love for marijuana. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday Super Bowl was the third in a row to feature at least one team from a state with legal marijuana, which had mm. kind of slipped by me. Also, I didn't really, I didn't catch that. Uh, but it was the first to take place in a city where cannabis is virtually legal. Now, it's medically legal, but San Francisco is v one of the most liberalized mm. cannabis cities in the, in, in the country. So let's see here. Uh, let's see. Uh, for a number of NFL reporters visiting host city San Francisco couldn't help but notice how prevalent and normalized marijuana is in the city by the bay. Even former San Francisco 49er star Deion Sanders was taken aback by marijuana's prominence. California was the first state to legalize mar medical marijuana in 1996 and is, by most accounts, the easiest of the 23 medical states to qualify for a recommendation. There is no specific list of conditions. Basically, right. almost anyone in the Golden State can go say, get a doctor's recommendation. Go in there and say, this is what I want to use it for, and they'll say, okay, try it. Right. <laughs> uh, and one ESPN commentator contrasted the Bay Area's love for cannabis with NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell's comments last week, indicating that the league is not expecting to change its prohibition on marijuana use by players, even for medical purposes, anytime soon. Even as more states enact marijuana reforms and as destigmatization de continues, sports leagues like the NFL are going to have to catch up to the public and stop punishing players who choose to indulge, whether in the on or off season. Mm. Um, let's see, what did it say? Uh, y you know. Yeah, stop making us criminals. Well, because <laughs> we're not <laughs> criminals. Uh, uh, absolutely not. And, uh, and, and, and the legal change, you know that. I mean, they've already kind of hinted that they would just by even saying that. Just by know, even mentioning I, was, it. I was actually surprised when he came out and said they weren't going to change it. I was yeah. very hopeful they were. I mean, well, they were hinting to change it. Actually, about uh, six, eight months ago, they were actually talking about it a little more. Yeah. Now they're backing off they a little bit. Way off. So this is just a game, you know. And they, you know, they knew Colorado was in it, and they knew sooner or later it's going to be done. And you know, people are, are going to talk about. It. They're going to joke about it. You know, it's the way it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, 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 as for you know, but they're they're banning it in, on their list of performance enhancing drugs. That's a little weird that they're doing that. <laughs> no, but, you know, it know. it's always a reason. You know, you know it, oh, it's it, not it may us. Make, it's the athletic commission, or well, oh, it's the government, or oh, it's something. It's yeah. all, it's always yeah. a wall yeah. they try to put up in front of themselves. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? And I've, I've worked instead of just dealing with I've it. I've worked with a lot of patients, and I've seen this plant do a lot of things. And it's, it's a it's mm -hmm. a it's a miracle plant. I mean, it can kill your pain. It can make you more creative. It it, it makes you hungry when you don't want to eat. But mm. I have never heard of it making you stronger. <laughs> no, it's not a steroid. <laughs> you know? Not a steroid. No, it's a, it's making you that. making you run faster. You know, yeah. these these are things you know that I, I've just I've never heard anyone make that claim. So but it does make you feel <laughs> it special. It makes running fun. <laughs> yeah. I like working out. It makes whatever you do yeah. more fun, but it doesn't it doesn't enhance your performance. No. I don't know. Does whiskey enhance your performance? <laughs> you think it does though. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's oh just boy. like if they're going to claim that it's illegal and that's why they're going to do it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't understand what the. Yeah. I, you know, I think they're just being careful because the truth is once it's rescheduled, I mean, you got the AMA, you got the VA doing test trials, you got PTS, you got all these things, good things going for it right now. As that changes, they'll change. We know that. I mean, yeah. it's all about the money and everything else. And I talk to these pain doctors all the time, and it's absolutely amazing the 180 degree turn they're doing. You know, uh, hey, I don't have to take Oxycontin. I heard that. You know, the other day, an American doctor was convicted for the first time of murder for overprescribing pain medication I to a patient. Too. And it's kind of sending yeah. waves through yeah. through the doctor community. Even Absolutely. though, like, if you look at the case, he was obviously really overprescribing this person. But still, mm. it's like they've opened that door mm. to having these people be individually liable for this now. So mm. I think you're going to see an even further pullback. Like, I've heard a lot of stories from patients that are saying, well, you know, I can't get my my pain meds because I have a marijuana card or the doctors have changed the rules so now I can't get my pain meds and they're, they're right. restricting it more and right. now that this they're going to even more restrict it which is going to push even more people to seek alternative right. medications which will eventually I would think yeah. lead them to lead more people to marijuana right. just because of the lack of access. Well I'm actually kind of seeing a little bit of that but I'm also seeing a reverse where even different HMOs are starting to come around to our view and a lot of doctors are just saying heck with it um, they've figured out how to make money off of this you know? really mm -hmm. yes well, and it's legally, like sport wait. like sports medicine sports medicine is a good example mm -hmm. for years they'd never wrote prescriptions on on physical exercise right and when they figured out how to bottle up sports medicine and make it a, you know part of the 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 call to action and uh and the same thing's going to happen with cannabis and hemp and all these other wonderful products i mean if it works it works and if they can write a script and make money off of it and no liability yeah, yeah. and no uh, one dies and it's <laughs> no. and it's not yeah. only the hmos i mean we just uh, right. recently dr leo capi bianco capo bianco here in town great doctor. is accepting full medicaid so yep. if you have full Medicaid, not Health Plan of Nevada or American Shield, you know where you're making a partial payment. If you have full Medicaid, you can make an appointment with him. Wow. And he bills <laughs> Medicaid for the doctor's <laughs> visit, so that saves you $120. Well, right in all fairness, the federal government itself operates a medical marijuana program to this Absolutely. day, does it not? There yeah. are four or five people yeah. scattered around the country back from that 78 case right. that are still getting those tins full of joints from Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So... Right. Maybe he's pushing it, but it's there's nothing technically outrageous about what he's doing. No, no. You, know, you know, you found a way, and and you know that's great. That's it's clever. A, it's 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 a great benefit for those patients. It's you wonderful. Know, say we have the patient in need program, and I've been steering a few of them right at that, and you know that they're, they're calling me and telling me thank you so much, you know, because you know you just saved them 125 bucks. You know, I had a veteran mm -hmm. call me recently, who got his card. And he talked to his VA doctor about his medical marijuana, and they took away his his prescription narcotic uh, based on prescription that. based yeah. on based on the the yeah. candid conversation. Because when they come and they say, "Well, I'm your VA doctor. You, you got to trust me," you know, right. and then you, tr you you tell them what they what you know you're supposed to tell them, mm. and they're like, "Well, you you shouldn't have told me that because now I'm ha I have to do this and that." And I'm like, "Well, we've been told by other veterans." that their VA doctors are cool and this and that. So I'm not sure, right. now I'm not sure what to tell people because I grew up with this kid, you know, I trust him. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me to tell, like, I've heard some people say, well, you know, the VA is cool and you can do this. But now on the other hand, we're getting this, this, this push and pull. So I'm not yeah. exactly sure what to tell people now. Well, actually the policy still is don't ask, don't tell. Right. Right now. So that's what, that's what I would advise you to do, folks. Don't ask, don't tell if you're, you're a veteran or you're in with the VA or whatever. Those times will change. And as the uh, VA continues these time trials, and as the groups like us and join us, you know, you can you can be an anonymous donor, you can be an anonymous participant in an organization like this, and you can really when the when Congress meets, you can make uh, your voice known, Look, and we can help you do that, and uh, we can change the world. So he wants to go world. like on the news and tell a story, and I'm like, look, you know, but you're receiving other right. VA benefits right now, so right. I don't know. Like, what is the risk versus the reward for you right. at this oh, point? Exactly. You know, because all real, 
Well, that's what I told him. All real activists end up in jail or in trouble right. at some point. But if you, you lived, know, Martin Luther King, right. like you know, all of the big heroes that you look to, all did time. Right. But if you led groups like us, like we, when we went to the legislature before, we went with the voice of 80, 90 year old women. Mm -hmm. We took patients' voices with us. We got them on the phone. We got their picture. We set them on the congressman's uh, desk or whatever. And uh, when you do those, and we, we can do that with soldiers too. We can do that with retirees and with veterans and VA people. So uh, if you can't be the spokesman, you can't stand in front of the camera for a speaker in front of the microphone, we can help you get your voice out there. So no doubt, no doubt. Us. We just wanted—I just want to do it safely. You know what I mean? Like right. we get these, we get these veterans, we get them in. We're like, man, we want to help you get these medications and stuff like that. And it's like, I feel like it's like a one step forward, two steps back kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like we got your your meds, good. Like you're in the program, okay. But now you have to deal with all this other problem, mm -hmm. and that was not. Like that's not the mm -hmm. intention. We're not looking to create problems for people. We're no. looking to solve problems for people. Right. So this is like slightly distracted. I know it's kind of like off topic here, but it's like, you know, it's something that came right. up for me in the past week. So well, I, I want to, I want to work on that eventually. Because you know? people come to us all the time, all week long. And we, we run into all kinds of civilians that want to be involved in this and they're afraid whether they're boomers mm -hmm. or they're young or whatever. And they're afraid about their job. They're afraid about the doctor. So I got another call about uh, custody issues. You know, and I had to refer them. I like look up Keith's case. Mm -hmm. You know, this and that, and like look at his Facebook page, find him, talk to him. You know, he's been through all this, but still, mm -hmm. it's like people are terrified. I'm going through custody. Mm -hmm. Can I get drug tested? What happens if? Well, I'm like, well, who's the judge? Well, what does yeah. that mean? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, mm -hmm. this is exactly. how it is. Well, you know, yeah, you I don't know that judge. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you know, yeah, it that's really, it. Really depends on the judges beliefs on that one yeah. well that's not what the parents want to hear they're I like know. dude you know i have this is my child and i'm like well make sure you have a good attorney <laughs> really it's ter really. it's terrible and, and it also has a lot to do with what you know when you're going through a custody battle what your ex pulls out against you oh also. absolutely right. I mean, that's, that's well yeah, they pull a claim well the answer to that is they all pull out everything every time yeah. because it's custody you know there are no there's nothing held back when it comes to kids right. i throw you know like people will throw you under all the wheels of the bus when it comes to their mm. kids if they can absolutely yeah we, we we went through it with uh jen's battle oh of course yeah. how easily i forget you just went through this recently yeah and they they tried throwing all that at us and the 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 judge didn't want to have anything to do with it he thank didn't god care. and the the police officer that they sent over to our house didn't care he's <laughs> like what's this you got a hundred plants we're well, like look. I You're guess where I'm going with look, we ain't got a hundred plants. Well, I guess where I'm going with this after after yeah. a roundabout way is like, there's always a battle to be fought. No matter mm. how how many steps forward we take or how many good things we get done, you know, the patients and all this stuff, there will always be legislative conundrums to mm. to uns unfuck uh, unscrew. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To to fix. And bleep, I don't bleep, like bleep. Yeah. No, all net, all <laughs> net. Thank kidding. God, this is all net. We can <laughs> do that here. We can slip. Yeah, we can do that here. But it's just like, man, yeah, well, you know, there's all. It's just always something. You yeah, know? It's, the it's battle is never over. The war is it, never over. It's never <laughs> going to end, and there's yeah. never going to be a perfect bill. And there's n no one's ever always going to be happy. There's always going to be people that find something wrong. Well, people yeah. think when wreck result. comes, like the war is over. It's like the war. That's just no. a new war beginning and when wreck comes. We still got to mold all the laws over the yeah. next twenty years after that and mm -hmm. get it all straightened out. Um, yeah, so the wreck bill, that is you know, that is coming up. It's coming up on us now. And I've, I've seen more people, more advocates speaking out against it again because it's not perfect. And what, what people got to realize is it doesn't affect our medical bill. Oh, it, dude, I'm not happy know. with IP1 100%. No. If you take a look, I'm, I would... I would throw out a lot of it, but I'm not going to throw it under the bus due to that. No, I mean, it's going to help a lot of people. It's going to yeah. decriminalize something that all these people are already doing. You know what I mean? And, and and it'll allow us quite a bit, you know, allow us in the medical program to to leverage that. I mean, if, if, That's the, law the, idea. Says, if the law says that, you know, any legal adult over 21 can grow up to six plants, up to 12 per household, yeah. as a patient, we're going to be able to say, hey, if they can grow six, I, I need this for medicine. I need Absolutely. to be able to grow more. Absolutely. I'm, I'm hopping on that you know? bandwagon yeah. so and quickly. And, and actually, <laughs> that is one of the best reasons to vote for the bill. It yeah. is. Whether you're in favor of recreation or not, think about what that, the magnitude of that. That basically guarantees that our patients will have that right. 
to continue to grow because yeah. you're not going to give it to one and the other. I mean, it's just yeah. not going to happen. They can't. They can't pass a it law saying that actually. that uh, re you know adult over 21 can grow it and then come around behind it and say, "Oh, you medical patients, right. no, not for you." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> you know? see, one thing you got to remember is that the Nevada law is a constitutional guarantee. Yeah, it's a constitutional so it's a amendment. Bit, it's viewed different, and that's one of the reasons why it's difficult to change our law over the last 15 years is because it has to meet a constitutional muster of two-thirds of the legislators to, to change anything in it because of taxation and mm -hmm. money. Okay, and it's actually uh, one of the highest things on the list because it is a constitutional guarantee to this. And that's a blessing and a curse. Yes, it is. <laughs> but yeah. once we get it fixed, it'll be a real blessing. Right. You know. Yeah, and I, I mean, and just just the fact that we could have tourists coming to Las Vegas oh, because man. they can smoke here and they yeah. can't smoke in their home state. Right. I mean, they come here already. Let's let we we'd add a whole nother group of tourists. Mm. We would not have empty hotel rooms on the weekend. Right. You we could turn I mean? 420 week into a thing here. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it can be a whole absolutely. week. Oh. Well, yeah. In reciprocity, Nevada having reciprocity, I talk about it all the time because uh, now seven other states have applied for reciprocity. That's awesome. I'm happy <laughs> so, about that. So they're all scrambling. They're jumping they're, on. And there's tons and tons of bills out there. There's like 35, almost 40 bills that are expected to hit the legislatures across the country between now and November. My, my. So, uh, and, and it's going to continue to snowball, you know. Yeah. Yeah, really good stuff. So, really yeah, cool. we, uh, well, we have the Nevada Marijuana Council here working towards putting one voice together in legislature mm. this next session because... There's no. so many interests and so many voices. And, well, what's and the word coming out of that council so far? What are they, what is the infamous they thinking that is well, important? They had, a, they had a meeting last Friday, and it was limited to 75 people because of the room size. Sure. Um, but they did, they did broadcast it on Periscope, even though, you know, they don't, it, it, it's, a, it's not a legislative council per se. It's a, it's a private group put together. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to follow open meeting laws. But mm -hmm. they're they're trying to let people know exactly what's going on, um, and there were some really good points points made at this last one. Um, one of them, uh, somebody had brought up about the illegal delivery services, and uh, Michael McCullough, uh, one of our former for former board members, got up there and he uh, he had said that why are we worried about these people? You know what I mean? So they're not they're not really breaking too many laws per se mm -hmm. so that we shouldn't be targeting them yeah. so i had a conversation with a guy on facebook concerning those mm -hmm. and uh someone was just like oh we got to get more cops on the streets to do this and do that and i'm like if you really want what's best for the city like we really want to talk about not what's best for in your opinion or whatever what's best is if we allowed all of the hundred plus delivery services to incorporate and start paying taxes mm. like if i can ma wave a magic wand and let everyone start paying taxes and go for it why the hell not let the free market dictate who stays open and who doesn't and things like that and you would weed out the bad ones real quick some people would take the risk to open a brick and mortar shop as they do in california some people would choose to keep it low-key and do a delivery service in their little neighborhood as long as everyone's paying their taxes, I don't see what's wrong with that. But people don't want to hear that, you know what I mean? There has to be more clamps put down always. But yeah. you know, if it was up to me, I would just let the free market ride. Yeah, and you know, and I understand the, the fact that these shops that spent a lot of money through the licensing procedure, all the different fees for their licensing, all the background checks that everyone had to have done, yeah. all that stuff. And sure, then, and then you could exempt them and from building, a tax and or building, something. And building them up to code that they don't want them. But I do not believe in extra police enforcement you know what i mean that's just we don't need it in our community no. you know what i mean it's you know basically criminalizing well i'd be super pissed if i was a dispensary owner too and i saw 100 people on weed maps and nothing was being done about it mm. yeah obviously it does get you, doesn't it? sure yeah it makes you feel like you're paying your taxes and you have these meetings with the sheriff and they're like yeah sure we're going to do something and they're like well it's break time actually i don't yeah. know if i yeah we got the man we don't got the manpower for that yeah, and Sorry, that, that seems to be the cop out, and then yet you still hear you still hear rumors and people talking about narcs in the, in the community. I'm like, 
What? What? Why does? Why would they even need a narc? They can go online. <laughs> they pull it up on Weed Maps. They make <laughs> yeah. a phone call. The yeah, guy comes right to their house. Yeah. Yeah. Right to them. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> what yeah, do you need a narc for? They're they're, they're advertising it online. Yeah. Well, it's like what a cake gig. That, what a cake right. gig. Yeah. It's like who are we gonna bust today, guys? It's like oh, <laughs> <laughs> throw a dart. Well, aren't Pick most of the delivery servers out of state too? Like I don't. I've well, never most of them have affiliations with out of yeah, state. Yeah. So a lot of them are getting their product from out of state. To get mm-hmm. my meds from these sh- from these delivery guys, mm-hmm. they come to the house and it says uh, prop. Uh, what is it? Senate Bill four twenty two fifteen a or whatever, or, yeah. right <laughs> on the packaging. And I'm just like, Welcome guys, please tear <laughs> off the label and put on a two fifty or a four fifty three a sticker. So pretend yeah. to care. Yeah. yeah. So so if if the police aren't doing anything about that. What makes you think yeah. they would do if, like, hey, yeah, yeah, I got, I, I know somebody who's selling weed. Well, hell, at that point, like I said, just let these people incorporate. So do we. <laughs> Pay the business license fee, incorporate, and since you were bad guys and you didn't follow the rules, you have an extra whatever percent tax, and there you go. And these dispensaries are exempt from that tax because they're grandfathered in, mm. and that's why they're licenses will be worth so much more or whatever but we're going to let you guys go completely legal and if you don't then we're going to take you to jail yeah or how yeah. about how about yeah you you guys can apply for a dispensary license it's this much and you'll have to buy from our licensed grows you know what i mean yeah. and start right. monitoring them that way yeah yeah, yeah it, it's got to be a way to solve no problem this issue you know, you know we'll yes. let the dispensaries live but right. you know I you got to support be, I think the, that'd be the state licensed businesses Obviously, I don't know. They're not. The they're, you know, they're not going to let that fly though. Like, and honestly, it was on like a city councilman's page that they were talking about it, and it's like so out of their hands. Mm-hmm. You know, like like it's not. It's just like wishful thinking to even post that on their page. That's really a state legislative issue, at if anything. But it's just like, you know, just to get people talking about it. Yeah, you know, yeah. and that that comes down to that that person doesn't know the the process, and that's part of what we're going to be teaching this Thursday night. It's like. You know, you can call up you can call up Mayor Goodman and, and beat her up all day about this and I can tell you what her response is gonna be. She goes she'll tell you that we just are here to enact the laws that are passed down to us. That's state. That's right. Yeah, you have to know who you're talking to. You have to <laughs> we choose can only your do target what audience that law carefully. Says. Yeah. <laughs> that is such a common thing with people. They have these issues and they're like talking to these people and it's like you're talking to the wrong person yeah that's right and it mm-hmm. makes you look like an ass because you don't even know what you, you know you know what you're talking about but you don't know who you're talking to which makes them feel like you haven't done your homework mm-hmm. exactly yeah you want to talk to the right person or you're even worse you're mm-hmm. not from around here and you jump in trying to do that it's just or, like, or you're oh. not registered to vote yeah or you don't live in their district you know yeah. that that used to that used to chap uh right. mayor goodman's right yeah she used to get a little upset with me because we used to always go to the coffee with the mayor because yeah. I'm involved politically and I live in unincorporated Cart County. Yeah. But you know, I'm uh, I'm from Vegas, you know, so it, it's. Oh, well, I live I in the city. An, what the hell? I have an interest to that. <laughs> so when she found when she found out that I didn't even live and I can't vote for her, she you know. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, are you kidding? You know? <laughs> you're, you're giving me a hard time and you can't even vote for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do I have to listen to you for anymore? <laughs> so, so yeah, it comes down to knowing knowing the right people to talk to. Wow, absolutely. So, All right, well, what else we got over there? Uh, I got a story out here. Arizona supporters of marijuana legalization unveil a pro-pot billboard at the Phoenix Open. Oh, my God. Golf is in the pot now? <laughs> Golfing on Not grass. Not just the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're supposed to golf on grass, right? Oh, yeah. I don't think they drug test in the yeah, PGA isn't Tour. Yeah, a grassy sport? I don't, I don't think, you know. I'm not sure how many performance enhancing drugs will enhance your performance with <laughs> golf. It's more of a exactly. like pool, more of a skill set. <laughs> it lays well, you back a little bit, you know. The, the story the story says uh, golf is an addictive sport and one that's embraced by the dark underbelly of those traveling in the fast lane. <laughs> I don't <laughs> what? know. I don't know if that's I how I would describe one, golf, but <laughs> that's not my Google <laughs> guy. Sure. It's long associated with the idle rich think nobility. Golf has re- recently <laughs> undergone a rebranding by some heavy hitters who hope to utilize the game's popularity in order to stress the need of legalizing marijuana in Arizona. So it kind of sounds like it's going yeah. to maybe a little bit of a happy Gilmore there. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's uh, tired of the toxicity twins dominating one of America's favorite sports. 
Supporters of Arizona's proposed ballot initiative to legalize marijuana are debuting a slightly risque Phoenix Open billboard Monday to correspond with the start of the most pop Arizona's most popular golf tournament. The sign reads, If beer and golf make for the greatest party on grass, why can't adults enjoy a, sa- enjoy a safer party on grass? Whoa, that's quite bold for Arizona yeah. and for golfers at the it's Open. It's a pretty conservative state. There's yeah. a lot of young people yeah. that play golf, though. Like, I know lots of young people who Yeah, but who it is a golf and fool so. state. And they, <laughs> they, yeah, they, sure is. So they, 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 they put out a slogan, uh, mm. the greatest party on grass. The greatest party on grass. <laughs> yeah. That Isn't would be a trip to see the drink girls rolling around okay. with joints instead of the drink carts, you know? That would <laughs> yeah. that would change things yeah. a little bit. Yeah, you're, well, sad. you know. And you'd probably <laughs> shoot, shoot a better game when you're on grass than alcohol, too. You have a little yeah. bit yeah. better control. But can you have imagine, your the people yeah. around, <laughs> sure. imagine the people around the world watching this from England and all over, and they're watching all this golf, because they do, you know, right? Mm-hmm. They're really religious around the world. And then they start seeing the, that billboard. <laughs> Boy, what are they going to think then, huh? Yeah. Welcome to America. The yeah. world is changing. Yeah, well, golf going after a younger demographic yeah. now. So That's good. You know, they yeah. should. Yeah, those millennials. Thank God for the millennials. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll see Bob Barker out there. There you go. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not all about it. Keep your fingers crossed for us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, here's kind of a weird story concerning federal uh, federal policy. There's supposedly some legislation being put through Congress to stop the United States Postal Service from threatening newspapers that mail marijuana ads. Apparently, that's a big deal in Oregon. Mm. A lot of the local dispensaries were trying to advertise their local papers, of course. Mm. And the United States Postal Service, who delivers those papers, were like, no, like you're not going to... You're not going to do anything of the sort, and we're going to, you know, put the clamps down on this and this and that. So they're just going. Uh, what do they call this? Lawmakers who support marijuana law reform are pushing House and Senate legislation called the Marijuana Advertising and Legal Sales or Mails Act to make it so newspapers can mail marijuana advertisements without legal risk. The new legislation simply adds a sentence saying that the provision does not apply does not apply to an advertisement to the extent that the advertisement relates to an activity involving marijuana that is in compliance with the law of the state in which that activity takes place. That's that sounds reasonable yeah. to me. Yeah, that yeah. <laughs> reminds me of what we went through. We actually talked about this a year or so back on the show. And then uh, it also reminded me of we went through that billboard deal where they didn't want the dispensaries to advertise. Well, they're they still bitching about that. Have but a sign and no neon signs. It's in and no, the city. That's, that's nothing on the building. Okay. It was crazy. And it was tied into this because it, it was the at the act. same time. Yeah, it was tied yeah, yeah. into this because they were saying, well, the post office won't even mail the flyers. Yeah, I, I do recall that. Okay. Yeah. And then... Uh, so also, oh, also this week we had Facebook attack a couple of legal state oh. licensed dispensaries yeah. in New Jersey and right here in Las Vegas. And oh. you'll find cannabis dispensary had their Facebook page removed for. Do you think it's because thing? their their page actually had the word cannabis in it, whereas Euphoria Wellness doesn't have that that I word on it? I don't it? know if it was about cannabis. Hmm. They said they said it was. Uh, they they're not supposed to have pictures of cannabis on their site. They said and uh, and all sorts of things. Really? I, I contacted them today that they're getting some of these pages restored, and they said they want us to remove all the pictures of cannabis off our page, and we're not our uh, page. Uh, no, off of their page. The okay, because I was down. like, yeah, don't don't no. shut down our page again. Yeah. Oh, well, we went through this. Yeah, don't. I'm yeah. not knock on wood. Yeah, so yeah. it's like I shouldn't have said that. You know, and and still, Facebook does not does not allow advertising or sponsored ads or sponsored posts of cannabis businesses or you know even they got a board of directors they're public now baby yeah. they got a board of directors to answer to and the interesting thing is that we've had to go to facebook right kurt yeah and where is it located one hacker way san francisco <laughs> right menlo park and, and so just, you know like, come on Oakland. guys you're in the yeah, you're in the worst the place area. to be against this cause you know yeah. i mean this is medicine okay <laughs> Get off this. I, I, oh boy. <laughs> I, I mean, Facebook has become so important to the cannabis community. Advertising, networking, everything. There's Absolutely. just like dozens of streams that it's responsible for. And I hope this isn't. I think I hope there's not something more like malicious behind the scenes. Like I would like to think this is just like an easy corporate policy that will get reversed. I hope it's not like oh you know like the state of California is pressuring. You know, the company or, you know, something Mm -hmm. like that, like Justice Department, because, you know, the Justice Department has been going to these social networks for anti-terrorism stuff. And I hope that they're not like, well, you know, since you're doing this for us, can you help us out with this, too? 
or something like that, you right. know, once they kind of open that door. Because for years, these tech companies have kind of resisted federal influence, like with the privacy issues, with the phones, unblocking the phones and things like that. Like, you know, they've been hesitant and now they're starting to flex. Like I saw the other day, Twitter is like, well, we're shutting down all the ISIS profiles. That's awesome. Next day, Facebook shutting down all the cannabis profiles. Not so awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, is there a correlation between the Justice Department's sudden influence and anti terrorism yeah. stuff well, and cannabis? Now, there's, you'll, we'll never know. You know, right. we'll yeah. never know. It, but it's, it's just my stoner mind thinking. It, it's a shame, too. You know, like Inyo was a great site for information on their Facebook. They, they do, you know, every couple of days, they'd put out mm -hmm. another graphic with a information about the different terpenes and what they do and, you know, what's available. Not only, you know, to be able to find out about their specials, mm. you can find out about the medicine on their yeah. site. And these these are tools that these businesses need to operate. You can't you can't say, hey, yeah, we'll give you a license for a business, but now you can't advertise anywhere. Right. right. I mean, but they'll take your money. Yeah, I mean that's that's <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's but bad. it's illegal for you to deposit the money in the bank, yeah. but it's legal for them to deposit the money right. in the same bank. Exactly. Ay yeah yeah. Well, that's because yeah. it just went through one more person, and and in in legal terms, isn't that a form of money laundering it is absolutely you potentially money laundering so, because you're knowingly you're knowingly <laughs> deposited the money that you are told is from illegal sources you're like here's my drug money you're they, like i will gladly yeah. take your drug money and put it in the bank yeah. thank you drug dealer yeah. here is a receipt for your drug money <laughs> you know that's basically what's going on and the bank's like thank you for the drug money city of las vegas there or whatever and it's like I, I don't know like i said the whole thing is kind of funny how they how you can you can pick and choose if you're government, but if you're an individual, you have to follow all of the rules, or even a business entity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're getting we'll low on time. Let's yeah. take a little second here to thank some of our sponsors. Uh, of course, all the fine sponsors here at Champs. Um, we got Nevada Pure Cannabis Dispensary out on Boulder Highway. 15% off to all veterans, senior citizens, and all people who attended AGE and Champs for this month. So check them out. We got a uh, Inyo Fine Cannabis Dispensary on uh, Sahara, mm -hmm. so check them out. They great deals, man. <laughs> their their product list on their website, it's just crazy the amount of stuff they did have. Did you notice? Oh, did you notice that Domino's Pizza closed the location they had across the street and reopened one directly in the suite next to Inyo? Uh, as soon as Inyo <laughs> opened, <laughs> yeah. So and Inyo also um, now is selling uh, Baker's ounces of shake. So I've heard that. Yeah, That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so if you're, We're good if for you're into making your own edibles, check them out. So, mm -hmm. of course, our doctors, we got Dr. Reefer, Karma Holistic, and Dr. Ivan Goldsmith. So, don't forget the workshop on Thursday, the Flamingo Library, 1401 East Flamingo. Be there at 6 o'clock. Uh, we need your input. And the uh, patients meeting on Saturday at the Coffee, Bean, and Tea on Maryland Parkway across the UNLV the Student Center. So, mm -hmm. Maryland Parkway, UNLV, Saturday. Um, come on out. Yep, we look check out weednewsnow.com. There you go. Thank you, Andrew and Cole, for coming out and giving us your time yes, again. Yes, thank you, guys. And your website? It's weednewsnow.com. And we're posting uh, pictures tomorrow and editing the video. So be on the lookout for that. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, thank you again. And I guess uh, yeah. same bad time, same bad channel next week. Yeah, we'll see you guys again. Safe. Hope to see you all soon at our next meeting.